it clears my brain. It gets rid of my stress. Certain people have a, have have more. I don't know. There's certain there's certain energy and stuff that some people have more than others. I, I don't know. People like myself and I don't know you and most of my friends that are into skating. Maybe have it in. Maybe have it. Maybe have a natural imbalance of of adrenaline and. What, I don't know, what ADHD or whatever you want to call yeah. that. But like I've found instead of having to take tablets, I've found a plank and four wheels on it that gets rid of my sh bullshit. I go fast, I go really fast. I like almost putting myself in quite a bit of danger, but knowing that, um, but then the end result is fine, you know what I mean? growing up you've got to remember they don't want they don't want to end up dead <laughs> they just want to have a good time so the thing that you fear that you're always afraid of is that your child's not your child's not going to come home um well that sometimes that happens but uh mostly it doesn't um but l losing losing him for that space of time and we did lose him you know he was for for a space of time, he was completely lost, um, but we got him back. But Finn went from a fairly ordinary, if slightly extreme lifestyle, to um, to this ultra extreme mental health situation, um, and then came out of it. I had I had an, I had an acute psychotic episode. <laughs> That's exactly what I had. Like I had no previous history of mental health. I had a lovely upbringing. My parents couldn't have done more for me. We went. We didn't have a lot. Of, we didn't have a lot of money when we were growing up, but they did, they made the best out of what they could do. I had a, I had a brilliant upbringing. I couldn't wish for better parents. I've just remembered a very vivid dream that I had in the period. I must have subconsciously known that there was a problem coming. Because in my dream, the four of us were, were going on holiday somewhere. We're on this journey and somehow Finn got separated. And the three of us got on to the transport and I could see him behind me. I said to myself, oh dear, the goblins have got him. But it's all right, he'll be back. <laughs> He was experiencing and demonstrating classic psychotic symptoms of feeling that he was being given information through technology, so through the television, through the telephone. And it was an episode. It had a start, it had a middle and it had an end. The controlling of it was entirely due to medication. Had that medication not been available to him, I, I can't imagine what his life would be now. It felt like... When you're running down a hill, you jump off your bike, and your feet are running quicker than you can really catch up with. It felt like I was, looking back on it now, it felt like I was like that. Yeah. In my head, I thought I was fine, but really, I was running too quickly. And I did a few things I shouldn't have done, and I got involved in some stuff that I shouldn't, which made me get quite paranoid. Eventually, I realised that what I, was, what, I, what I had done and the things that I had been in trouble with had, had, had gone, and instead of keeping my head down and learning from it, I kind of went full throttle again. Looking back was totally the wrong thing to do because it, it just made my brain snap. The fucked up thing is that you feel more clear than you ever have done in your life. 
I'll tell you what I wasn't doing. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I didn't sleep properly for about two weeks before I got sectioned. I was only eating. I was only eating bananas and fucking toast and spouting off a whole load of crazy ideas and saying about how I've worked this out and how come on, look at this and draw this together and that's what I was doing. My mum and my dad or someone saying some doctors are going to come and talk to you today. So like three people came to the house and in my head I knew who they were already. I was like, oh, you're so-and-so, you're so-and-so. You're like this person that I've been thinking about. And oh yeah, see, I told you that he's, he was going to come. I was like, oh fuck, I've been tricked. And I thought I was going to prison. I thought they were taking me to prison. And then I get there and I'm like, oh shit, yeah. And I see the people, I see where I am. I'm sat down and I was like, for quite a little while I thought I was in prison. What was going on in Finn's brain and what he was relating out to us all it was like a David Lynch movie, you know, where it's all these disparate things going on that are all kind of pulled in together into a pot that don't really bear relationship with each other, but somebody's making a narrative out of it. And it was all mixed up with highly Selassie, Irish Republicanism, Communist Party, all sorts of carry on was all being mixed up and bits from my past that I told him about he was pulling in and identifying himself with them and yeah it was just totally bizarre looking back at it. I mean I'm not a great one part of am talking about the emotional side. Yeah. I, obviously I you know was not obviously, happy. Say, it, was say, week, say. it was the week before Christmas and you just think this is this is not now a good time at all for any of this carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And, and as well of course when you're in the car with them you start thinking about how you're responsible, what have you done wrong or have I done anything wrong and you know you haven't but um it's it's the natural reaction and then you start thinking well is there something in, in my genes that i'm passing on that type of carry on as well yeah so it's yeah it's about the guilt trip that people get when you're not in a position to do anything yourself you start blaming yourself heavily prescribed drugs i had to take like six or seven a day like benzo then like benzo diazepine tramadoli type stuff it was actually quite fucked up because when i went in when I went into hospital, I was doing a lot of drugs when I went into hospital. I was living life very much in the fast lane. The dose that they gave me when I first came into hospital didn't do a thing. The doctor had a meeting with my mum and they were like, the dose that your son's on at the moment, he should be like slumped in a chair, not being able to move and he's running around trying to break windows and flip tables over and rubbing everything out. So it was fucking hell, man, <laughs> if I'm honest, it was horrible. And I was young as well. I was only 18. I was the youngest person on the ward, like. <laughs> I remember realizing that the ideas I had in my head that I was so sure of, maybe might not be so black and white. <laughs> the consultant said to us in that, sometime during that last week that he was in hospital, he, he said, we won't be seeing Finn again. And he said, I'd never say that to anybody, but I feel very confident to say to you that Finn won't experience what he's been through, what happened to him again. And I think that made everybody feel reassured. I just remember going for walks with you, wasn't it? We'd just go for long walks, have a, have a couple of beers. We'd just go and walk down to the Hungry Horse or somewhere yeah. like that, have a, a feed and a couple of beers. But I'd never let him, he never had more than a pint and a half. No. Just in case she hears this. Yeah. I don't think he's finished growing. He's still on that journey of growing and developing. But sometimes I think you take a lot of things for granted and I don't think he takes anything for granted now. It's an illness and an injury that you see in a different way. It's not like, and it's why I'm so open to speak about it, because if I broke, if I broke my ankle, I wouldn't be ashamed to say I couldn't walk because I broke my ankle. I'd just say I fucking, I was running a bit too quickly. I had a bit of an injury. I should have left it. It was a bit funny to begin with. I should have left it, but I ran on it anyway and it broke. And now I have to chill for, now I have to chill for a while. I'll be fine. I'll be fine, but I just have to not run on it for a little while. And it's the same with your head. It's just another part of your body. And I think that people are realising that slowly but surely. Institutional gloom, fluorescent lit room, green glittered limp on the table. What need these for Christmas trees, who have witnessed dread beams and more wondrous scenes than the virgin's birth in the stable? <laughs>